What a nice fish, Rob. Well, thank you. Very nice. This is David Buckmeyer from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, and uh, he's a biologist I've been working with on tagging these fish. And uh, he's, I'm getting all the data, and he's, you know, analyzing it and, and seeing what the, you know, how old these fish are, how long uh -huh. they can live, what their growth rates are, and uh, all that stuff. We're just going to put in a, a spaghetti tag, one of these little orange Floyd tags, and all we do is we just stick that in right there. Okay. And it's got a unique number. That fish is 1501. And there's just a phone number on there to call if, if that fish is captured so we know what happened to it. She's got a tag in her? Yes, sir. Right over the gunnel. Right over the edge. Just eat her over. Let her go. Whoa. So, Dave, this uh, tagging the fish is going to allow, allow to get some population size estimates on this. And uh, so that's kind of in the, ver in the early beginning stages. But that's really just a start in terms of understanding about these, these gar out here, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, Rob. Uh, with Kirk's help, we've been able to get a rough population estimate so far. Uh, we estimate that the, the number of fish in this stretch of the river is probably about 40,000, that being above Lake Livingston. As he catches more fish and we get more recaptures, we'll be able to improve that and uh, have a much you know, tighter estimate of that. Uh, on top of that, we've been able to look at size structure and what percentage of the fish are, are you know, trophies like you just released. Um, we, right now, we estimate that about 5% of the population is uh, over roughly six feet, six, six and a half feet. Um, and we've estimated that sustainable harvest would be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 5%. And that's based on their life history. Much like sturgeon, they live a long time, they don't reproduce every year, so we need to, you know, understand those things. So you're talking about just a handful of those real trophy fish that, you know, that we believe is sustainable harvest. So Dave, based on, based on the data so far then, that uh, um, the state is coming up with a new regulation then, the first time ever for the GAR. Yeah, Rob, that's correct. We, uh, we went to the commission earlier this year and we got a one fish per day regulation passed. And uh, for now, that's, you know, at least to give some protection we're, as we're learning more about these fish. Um, in some areas, we may find that, you know, more regulation is necessary. In other areas, that regulation may be sufficient. It really depends on, you know, the recruitment and, uh, and how many of these fish there are. So with help from people like Kirk, we're able to determine that. So these fish might only spawn once every five to seven years, or who knows? It's kind of like kind of like sturgeon, another exactly. another fishery that's like this. This real special fish. Oh baby! Oh, what a creature there! <laughs> <laughs> you called that. Ready to get this one in, Kirk? Wow. Woo! <laughs> Man, Kirk, you know, this, you can't go anywhere else in the world and get into giant fish like this in, in terms of gator gar populations. This is the top of the heap right here. Yes, sir, we have the last, you know, the, the best population alligator gar anywhere in the world. And uh, you know we're we're trying to uh, improve the regulations, and, and you know where these fish will be here for everybody else. So yeah, we have to. It is truly a national treasure.